Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to our channel, Jen Star. I am your whole star, aka Lane, and today we are going to be talking about what is the most unprofitable channel since its creation, the CW. And since today, um, January twenty fourth, is CW's birthday, their their creation, their anniversary of them being created, and it's also me and Jen, my twin sister, who also runs this channel with with me. It's our birthday as well. I just think that it's just perfect that the stars align. Like I just have to, to give a brief history of the CW and put in my thoughts about the CW n not being profitable since they've been created. I just feel like who else is perfect than the person or the people born the same day that the channel was launched. You know what I mean? It just it, it just makes sense. I mean, obviously, obviously there are better people to talk about this than, than I am, but um, I, I, I just want to talk about it because I really do like the CW or I used to like it. Anyways, let's get into the video. Earlier this year, articles started to flood the internet about CW's unprofitable shows. CW was created in 2006 and not once had this channel made any money from their successful shows, or at least not a high amount of money, or at least not the money that they should have made. Before we talk about this news, let's go over the short history of the CW. The CW was the merger of the WB and UPN. According to Wikipedia, the WB AK Warner Bros. was first launched in January 11th, 1995, as a joint venture between the Warner Bros. Entertainment Division of Time Warner and the Tribune Broadcasting subsidiary of the Tribune Company. The channel's target audience was teens and young adults. Shows like Gilmore Girls, Charmed, Smallville, and the first season of Supernatural aired. UPN, aka the United Paramount Network, was created in January 16, 1995. According to Wikipedia, the UPN was created when the network was originally owned by Chris Craft Industries United Television, Viacom, through its Paramount Television unit, which produced most of the network series turned the network into a joint venture in 1996 after acquiring a 50% stake in the network and subsequently purchased Chris Craft's remaining stake in 2000. Shows on UPN were Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Veronica Mars, and The Twilight Zone. Both WB and UPN were launched days after each other and both ended due to the merger that created the CW. That merger was only possible due to the decline of both channels. Combined, UPN and WB had lost $2 billion, and compared to the heavy hitter channels like ABC, they were not as popular with viewers or financially. I won't go over both these channels as a whole, but if you want a history on them, please let me know. The new broadcasting channel, The CW, was launched in January 24th, 2006. The channel started to use previous shows found on either channels like Gilmore Girls, Supernatural, Smallville, America's Next Top Model, Everybody Hates Chris, girlfriends, and more. Despite the success of their launch, within the first year, the CW were already having problems. During their second year, the viewership for their channel started to take a dive. To make it more worse, between 2007 and 2008, there was a strike called the Writers Guild of America strike. From November 5, 2007 to February 12, 2008, many members, specifically 12,000 film and TV screenwriters to be exact, went on strike. It wasn't a good year for the CW. Because of this, in March of 2008, the CW had to shut down their comedy department, so shows like Everybody Hates Chris, The Game, and Girlfriends came to an end, where most of them were also cancelled. And then they combined their already existing programs into one programming, and that year the network also had to lay off 25 to 30 employees. A couple months later, the CW gave away their Sunday TV spot to a different company due to their own low ratings and viewership on Sundays. However, this agreement did not last long. Due to the poor ratings from that other network, causing the CW to stop their partnership in November 2008. It was during this time that the CW was advertising themselves as a female teen network for girls 18 plus, specifically girls from 18 or females from 18 to 34. So board targeted shows like the WWE programming that were on CW came to an end and weren't renewed for another season. The CW took an even more dip in ratings and it was rumored that the network would have shut down. However, with the success of shows like Gossip Girl and Vampire Diaries at the time, during the 2008-2010 to 2010 season, the CW stayed on air. But that's only because their parent company saw potential. Starting in 2011, the CW wanted to keep their female-targeted audience but did also want to bring in new viewers and bring back the comedy show that they shut down years before. 
In 2012, the CW rebranded themselves as an 18 plus adult channel as opposed to a female targeted channel. Also in 2012, saw the premiere of CW's Arrow becoming the channel's third highest premiere viewership of all time after The Vampire Diaries and The Flash, and it helped bring in a male audience as Smallville had ended a year before. As Arrow continued, Successfully, Vampire Diaries got their own spin-off, which was the originals in 2013, to high success as well. Then Arrow expanded their own universe as well with The Flash in 2014, which has the highest premiere viewership on that channel and became the most watched show on that channel. The CW continued to have success after The Flash with Jane the Virgin and DC Legends of Tomorrow. The channel's viewership was increasing and their male audience was increasing as well. In the upcoming years, the CW shifted from making original shows to using already existing properties and rebranding, rebooting, or making spin-offs for it. Their superhero lineup is a prime example with the addition to Supergirl, which aired originally on CBS and also Black Lightning, as well as Riverdale coming from Archie Comics or the rebooted Dynasty. In 2018, after AT&T bought Warner Bros, they co-owned CW with CBS instead. The company continued on their already successful strategy and created the spin-off legacies from the Vampire Diaries franchise. They also rebooted Charm and Roswell as well, and later on added shows like Batwoman, Katie Keene, which was a Riverdale spin-off, and Nancy Drew. As much hate the CW has gotten in recent years about the show's quality, specifically their writing and the programs they choose to put money into and continue, it needs to be said that the shows they make are properties that CBS and Warner Bros. own. It is likely that they tell the CW what to make, or those who run the company choose to use properties their parent companies already own to create content from. Now into 2020, and the CW has expanded to more streaming services for their content, other than Netflix. Shows found in the Arrowverse can be found on Netflix like they have been for years, except Batwoman. Legacies, Vampire Diaries, The Originals, Roswell, Charmed, All-American, The 100, and Riverdale can be found on Netflix. And Riverdale's spin-off, Katie Keene, can be found on HBO Max. Other shows on HBO Max are Walker, Stargirl, I believe Superman and Lois, and Nancy Drew. It is worth noting that Stargirl and Superman and Lois were also co-financed by HBO slash HBO Max, so the quality of the shows are a lot better than what you can typically find on the CW. The CW continues to make superhero shows which dominates their channel. The newest examples were Swap Thing, I believe in 2019 or 2020, which got cancelled after its first season or a couple of episodes into their first season. Superman and Lois, which is coming with a second season this year, and Naomi, which is currently airing their first season. Now we are caught up to 2022. I didn't go over the entire company's history, but I went through what I believe was the most important facts. Note, I did not talk about the CW's blocks or the different blocks they had on their channel or every show they ever produced. So January 6, 2022, the Wall Street Journal, amongst others, posted that the parent companies of the CW want to sell some stakes or all of the CW since it has been unprofitable since its creation in 2006. This is extremely surprising of what you assume where all the heavy hitter shows they created, such as The Flash, Gossip Girls, Vampire Diaries, Smallville, and Supernatural, if they really weren't making money, how could they afford to keep shows airing for seasons like Supernatural? There are some shows who could have or should have ended years ago if there really was a lack of money, and because if there really were a lack of money and funding, or you know, CW wasn't being profitable, um, there are certain shows that that are airing in CW to this day that literally could have made the cut um, just because they're horrible shows. With potential buyers lined up for the company, it is rumored that the company will, could change its direction and produce news programming shows. However, it is too early to say and it's also a case-by-case -case basis depending on which companies are lined up and who eventually will buy the CW. Though the news came out about the CW not being profitable, it is hard to understand how this is so because no numbers and actual data have come out. So the measure of what is deemed profitable or not is hard to tell. However, I don't see a channel not being profitable, creating 15 seasons of a show and continuously creating new TV shows. Even due to the success of their long-running series, everyone knows how bad CW's shows are or have become. Riverdale wasn't ever great, but their first season was the only acceptable season, and The Flash fell off after season 2 or 3 depending on who you ask. The network is targeted due to their writing and youth and teen-oriented audience, which has caused a channel decline in viewers. However, the dispersed of their shows over many streaming platforms like Netflix, 
HBO Max, and Paramount Plus also contributed to that. Before, CW had a partnership with only Netflix. However, in 2020, they chose to end it. And let's not forget that CW had their own streaming service that takes their TV ratings and viewers with their next day streaming option. So even with shows like Vampire Diaries, Arrow, and The Flash, and Jane the Virgin, and The 100, all airing around the same time, the CW never really hit a peak. Since I don't care too much for the shows that are on the CW now, I don't really care too much about what happens for the channel. Um, however, the CW is home to probably the most amount of youth, teen, and young adult shows still airing on TV and not created for streaming apps solely. And with these small one-hit wonders of recent years like all-american i do hope the channel doesn't completely disappear since there are fans for the show and for this channel but i do hope the sh- the channel can take a new direction hire new writers and just make better appealing shows and better sounding shows if that makes any sense that's all my information on the cw their history my thoughts about this cw being very unprofitable i find it weird but if you look at their history they had a rocky start in the beginning they had an increase in viewers in the middle of it around the 2008 2011 12 season and then they just basically been declining since even though they've had like continuous seasons of shows like the flash or riverdale or supernatural um after their like little peak with the introduction of arrowverse and getting a influx audience of male viewers they just been stagnating and it's just been declining ever since. And now you would think that if if a channel will put their stuff on streaming sites, that it would bring in new um, viewers, which it does for the CW since their ratings for their TV shows are pretty low. They do make most of their money on the revenue from the streaming sites, but because their shows are dispersed between many streaming sites, um, it's been doing them more harm than good of them spreading out um their content as opposed to having them all on netflix um like they had in the past so you, there, there there's some evidence of it of you kind of understanding why it's being unprofitable um but you know they've only been around for what 15 uh years um so there there's this hope for the company to to be better and I like I said with All American and Superman and Lois being really really good um you would maybe the maybe the network is going in a better direction but then also think in recent years Swamp Thing which like I said got canceled after a couple of episodes um and Naomi um I haven't watched it yet but I heard it's not looking pretty good so you know they keep going back and forth with having good decent shows and then going back to having something bad but yeah, and I, I don't really know what much to say. I really, CW was a really big part of my childhood um, in the mid-2010s, early 2010s. Um, so it'll be sad to see it go if it if they do end up selling it. Um, but hopefully they sell it to a company um, that will continue the shows and, you know, put it into a new direction as opposed to completely changing the content on the channel as a whole, if that makes sense. Regardless, thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> I guess happy birthday to the CW. Happy birthday to myself and my sister as well. And I really hope you guys like this content. And Jen and I will see you in the next video. I think I'll be probably around um, next month. And we have some Black History Month content in the works. But yes, thank you guys so much for watching. It really means a lot. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Remember, stay kid at heart. Peace. <laughs>